Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, last week I did a new video. I um, haven't done one in a while so I'm back now. I'm going to be releasing a bit more content. Uh, excuse my face and hair, I just got out of the shower so I'm a little bit damp. Um, but anyway, today I'm going to be looking at a different PC that I built up uh, for extremely low cost. And this PC cost me around in total probably under two hundred dollars let's take a look at the parts um it has a i5 2500k uh in it which is an older cpu but it is still okay for gaming um as you can see there it has a nice little tower cooler with rgb built in i don't know how well you can see it but you should be able to see it there um this video isn't going to be one of the building videos where i build a pc this pc is already built and i didn't want to um I don't want to take it apart just to build it again. You guys have seen me build PCs a lot of times. I just want to sometimes talk about them and, and show you the results as well. So we're just going to talk about how much it costs and what's in it. So the i5 2500K, some ASUS motherboard, uh, full ATX. I don't know which one it is. Um, it has that tower cooler. I added two blue fans to it just to give it a little bit of light because it was a little bit bland. Um, it has this half um, tower... Uh, it's like a, I think it's like a mid ATX Cooler Master half, um, because the the half that I used to have when I was a kid was a lot bigger. It was like twice this size. But this one is is kind of cool because it has the window. I, I'm not a big fan of the fan in the window, but I know some people like that. And uh, geez, my hair is a mess. But um, yeah, so that's that's the case. Uh, it's got some good ventilation at the front. This is all perforated. Uh, with air moving through and it has the fan at the back blowing out and it has the fan at the side and um, yeah apart from that in terms of RAM it only has 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM but I mean this is an entry level build so that's fine um, and then it is dual channel which makes a little bit of a difference and then apart from that we are rocking a GTX 662 gig so look this isn't going to challenge your your upper class recent PCs or anything, um, but it doesn't have to. It's, it's an entry level build. Um, it's gonna cost half the price of a last gen console. Um, so, you know, it's it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, $200 for this is a guess. Um, how much I actually paid for it was, I paid 500 Rand for the graphics card but it was a whole system so you've got to say like half of that like 250 rand i got the case for free uh, i got the motherboard cpu and ram for free um, because i had sold a pc to someone else and they gave me the old uh, system basically um, and that came with the tower cooler so i put in a 128 gig ssd that cost me 300 bucks um, not dollars rand um, so it's about 20 rand, uh, 20 dollars, um, and then so it's 250 rand plus 300 rand, and then apart from that, um, the hard drive. Let's say it's an old hard drive, but let's say 100 rand for like an old terabyte hard drive. Um, and what what else is in it? I mean, we have a DVD ROM that's not worth anything, um, and the power supply. I paid 250 rand for it's a 600 watt generic power man power supply. So in total, I paid under a hundred dollars for this PC. Now look, you don't always get that lucky. You don't. I have a bunch of contacts that give me stuff for free sometimes, but um, you know, if you look around, someone has an old PC. Maybe they just want fifteen dollars for it. Like that, you just buy them a Happy Meal. Um, yeah, like I'm sure you can get some of this stuff if you're someone that wants to get into gaming, want to test it out with a cheaper system before you buy an expensive console or expensive PC. This is a good way to do it. So I'm probably going to sell this system for, yeah, around $200. Um, that's more or less what I would sell this for. Um, so, yeah, with that said, that's that's the system. Um, nothing to write home about, but I think there are more people still using systems like these than, you know, most tech YouTubers think. And I think it's important to represent those people as well. Um, so let's rock an old, 10-year-old Gaming PC, let's see what it can do in 2023. Let's benchmark it. Stay with me. So first up here we have Doom Eternal. And um, this is a title that I like to test a lot. This is the very beginning of the game. Um, this is running at uh, 720p 
uh, low settings right now and it does have dynamic resolution. This game seems to be just a little bit difficult for this car to run, so we are running it at 720p with dynamic resolution. Um, but, you know, for $100, um, I think it's a pretty good result. Uh, I think it's a game that, you know, most $400 PCs would be able to run on high, but this isn't a $400 PC, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it feels fine like this. If you switch off dynamic resolution, it does struggle a little bit, like around the 30 FPS mark, which is a little bit low for me to game on. I like to game on at least 45. So I would rather just, um, you know, on a smaller screen like this, who cares about, um, you know, playing at HD? Because um, this screen does support HD as well. But I feel like gaming on... 720p on a 21 inch screen, a 22 inch screen maybe, um, is fine um, and it looks good. I mean this is running at low and it's good looking and I think a part of that is because it's it's kind of compressed. Uh, I think that's a part of it and um, yeah I just feel like you know if you're someone that's getting into gaming this, this looks quite nice and for the price of this system I think that, that this is uh, this is more than acceptable, I would say. So, yeah, that's that's how I feel about it. I think it's a, it's a pretty good result so far. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see what the temperatures and stuff uh, are doing. So, the GPU is at 60 degrees temperature right now. Um, doesn't feel to be blowing a lot of hot air. It's 60 is actually not that hot at all. I'm kind of surprised. Um, 70% utilization and it's taking about 90 watts um, the CPU is I forgot to switch on the temperature so we'll check that in the next one but it's at around 45% utilization 60% and uh, pulling around 40 watts and we are using most of our most of our video memory is being used um, and almost all of our RAM is being used so if you want to play a game like like Doom Eternal you'll probably have to um, probably have to turn the graphics a little bit lower on a system like this but as I say I think this still looks really good and um, I think video game graphics have come a long way in terms of you know how it used to be because you can now run games on low graphics and they still look pretty good um, now of course this is a busy area so this is where it'll drop down a little bit getting like around 30 fps now which is to be expected but as you kill off enemies it'll get better um, look i'm not saying this is the best way to play the game but uh, i do feel like it is definitely playable um, because that that is what the question would be right is is the game playable um, and i think it is i think you'll get 40 to 60 fps for the most part but in busy areas like this, I think you will have to expect a drop down uh, here and there. And uh, I think that that's just a part of budget gaming. Um, I feel like that is what it is. So, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good result for the money paid, uh, to be honest. I feel like it's not an expensive PC. Um, and to have modern titles like these playable, uh, I feel is pretty good. So... I don't remember there being so many enemies in this area. I did update the game finally, but um, yeah, this is a lot of enemies. I'm playing on easy just because it's difficult to play and talk at the same time. But yeah, even for easy, this is a, this is a lot of enemies. Uh, I just want to get to the next section so we can see uh, outside what what it does I wouldn't be surprised if it drops down to like the 40s for the most part but uh, yeah it's a little bit low it's around 30 39 uh, it, it goes up and down but as I said it looks good um, it doesn't feel too bad it's playable so I think we'll give Doom Eternal a pass on this system let's get to the next one okay we are loading into the Hitman benchmark um, I updated the um, the scaling in uh, Afterburner and now it's a little bit too big so I'm gonna have to update it again for the next benchmark but it's fine we can see the important stuff um, 
And right off the bat, so this is running at 720p low, no resolution scaling though, so this is native, 720p. Um, and yeah, I feel like it's it's doing okay. I um, feel like we could have probably pushed it to medium, but I think I'm just going to run low for, for AAA games on this test, because uh, this is a PC that you would expect to play on low. Um, but this one is doing well, it's getting around 100 FPS now. Um, I think it might drop a little bit down when you get to a lot of CPU usage in the busy areas. Um, but yeah, the GPU's temperature is just around 60 degrees and these gigabyte uh, coolers were really good back in the day. I mean, they still are. Using around a gig and a half of um, video memory, uh, which is not too bad. Um, and using around, we are maxing out the CPU and the GPU in terms of performance. So that's good. I mean, you do want that because that means there's no real bottleneck. Um, and then for RAM, we are using around five gigs of the available eight. And the frame rate has just been fantastic for this test. So I'm pretty happy with how good it is. Um, and hopefully it'll, it'll stay above 60. But so far, this has been a much more than playable demonstration of what a, in this case, $100 PC can achieve. I mean, this PC cost me like $80. Um, now, if you bought one, it would be like 200 but even for that price, like I said, for half of the price of a console, not even a modern console like last gen, I feel like that's a really good price. And um, I feel like if you get the opportunity to get something like this, you should go for it. So with that said, let's get to the next test. All right, loading into the Tomb Raider benchmark here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And this is one I always like to do because it's a relatively new game, you know, it's only a couple of years old at this point. And um, I think it's still very relevant. Um, I think it's a good looking game, but it still supports a little bit older hardware like this. So right now this is one of the difficult scenes and we are running at 720p low, um, but it still looks pretty good. Um, and this is getting around 40 to 45 FPS. So that's not a bad result. Um, the GPU is being maxed out in terms of usage, the CPU is not, CPU is at around 60% usage. Um, temperature is climbing a little bit for the GPU, but it is dropping for the CPU. Um, in terms of VRAM, we are almost maxing out the GPU's VRAM at 1.8 gigs. And um, we are pulling around 110 watts with the GPU and around 40 with the CPU. So in terms of wattage, this is even a really good system because it's pulling around 200 watts total most of the time. Um, the power supply that's in here is a 600 watt unit, which is a little bit overkill for this, but um, that's just what I had. Um, and, you know, in terms of RAM, we are using around 5.5 gigs, we have 8 gigs. So if you are someone that's happy with low uh, quality gaming at um, 720p, um, you'll be able to play recent games with a $200 system. Um, you know, and sometimes you get really good bargains, you'll get better systems than this for a better price. It happens as well. Um, but the point is that for a low cost you can get pretty good gaming um, and I think that the system is a testament to that. So this scene is a little bit easier to run with all of the LODs in the background and all of the trees and everything. Um, I always think this is a well optimized scene because there's a lot going on but it's they use a lot of um, optimization techniques in development that makes it palatable and makes it um, makes it look good and run pretty well. So I think that's that's a good indication of uh, you know good development at the end of the day. But besides that, I think um, the PC is doing quite well. It's around 40 FPS, which I would expect. And um, although this doesn't look the best without like a bunch of shadows and a bunch of uh, you know SSAO, HBAO and all of these techniques, I think it still looks really good and it looks better than all Tomb Raider games, even at low. So, yeah, the PC runs this game quite well. You could probably push some settings to medium um, if you're happy with, like, a sub-40, 35-ish FPS gaming. But um, I think it definitely runs this game quite well. Let's move on to the last benchmark here. Okay, getting into some Graven here. Now, this one is not a benchmark per se. This is just me playing the game, but... I always like to include Graven because I feel that it's a good representation of sort of like double A indie games um, that people might play on systems like these. So I'm talking about your 
you know, your Graven, your um, some of those strategy games like um, like Nordheim, um, you know, um, those kinds of games like uh, you know just cartoony style, uh, stylized uh, indie games or even AAA games, but games that are made to run well on all the hardware um, that aren't as demanding. And I feel that this game is something like that. I feel like most older strategy games or indie strategy games would run similarly. So you can get around 80 to 100 FPS. Um, and if you just want to do light gaming, you know, play some indie games or um, indie first person shooters like this game or, um, you know, any number of uh, indie games that are stylized, um, you would be probably be able to do that on a system like this. And um, that also goes for your esports titles like your Counter-Strike uh, CSGO or Counter-Strike 2 now. Um, I guess you'll still be able to get around like 100 FPS at Ultra Graphics on that. Um, remember this is running at 720p, um, but Rocket League you'll get around 100, um, Valorant you'll get more than that. And um, yeah, you'll even be able to play games like FIFA or... 2k or whatever it is that you want to play you know you'll be able to play a lot of games like that on a system like this and um, I feel that this is a good representation of what low costing systems would get you in 2023 and if you like I said if you're someone that just wants to play the sort of indie style games that um, have lower graphical fidelity but um, still look good in their own way because it's it's like a stylized version of um, what a AAA game would be these days. Um, and I think a game like this runs well. And it's not going to tax your hardware too much. Um, and th that also goes for all the games. Like something like this gets you a DVD-ROM. Um, so you can play all the games like, you know, your older Far Cries, your Crises, your um, Command and Conquer, whatever it is that you we're into as a kid if you want to play games like that again this is a good middle ground because you can play those games at max but you can play recent games you know since the online era you can play recent games as well um, but uh, it, you know uh, don't expect to max out games with this but you'll definitely have a good time and you'll be able to play games um, and I think this is a good testament to that um, so yeah, I'm not going to play too much, just wanted to do the intro and get to this point and just be able to look around and yeah, I think this is a good looking game because it's it's got its own style at the end of the day. Um, looking at the specs here, GPU is working hard, CPU is not doing too much, um, pulling around 200 watts still and um, using around half of the RAM, 4 gigs of RAM. CPU, GPU 70 and 60 degrees and we are getting around 95 fps for the most part so definitely a fantastic result you can easily play indie games like this valheim nordheim um any number of uh, of smaller indie titles you would want to play so that's the last benchmark um let's talk about this system quickly and uh, let's finish the video off stay with me so that's it for the video talking about this uh you know, low cost system that, um, you know, you can play most games on these days. Um, it's not going to be able to max out recent games, but you'll be able to run them at low. Um, you know, any of the modern titles like your God of Wars or your uh, Days Gone or anything like that, you'll be able to play at low settings. Um, and I think the stance that I'm taking with a PC like this is it's a good level of entry sort of system where it's not something that is going to hold, you know, it's not going to last you for the next five years. But if you want to start out with gaming and you only have a small budget, I think you should get something like this. Something that you can play around with for a year. You'll be able to run Battlefield, Call of Duty, you know, just at low settings. Um, and you can decide if you want to spend more on a more expensive system down the line and, you know, use this as a media center or whatever it is that you would want to use it for after you're done with it. But Regardless of that, if it were me, I would get a system like this to play old games with because of the DVD-ROM and because, you know, it's 
it's really good hardware for older games. Um, I'm talking about 2010 till 2014, maybe around there. Um, even you know, pre 2010, you know, let's say up to 2000. Now I know most of you watching this wouldn't have been playing games then, but uh, that that was when I was a kid, and uh, you know, thinking back to when I was in school, um, 2007. You know, we used to play Call of Duty, Crisis, those kinds of games, and um, a system like this would have been a beast then. Um, obviously, that is 15 years ago, but, you know, I think it's still something that can run games pretty well, and um, I think you could consider something like this at the end of the day. I'm uh, rambling on a little bit, but uh, if it were me, I would play all the games and indie games with this. Uh, you could play, you know, the indie games releasing now are really well optimized, made for low spec hardware. And uh, if you just want to start out with something like that, I would do this. So if you have 100 to 200 dollars for a system, build something like this and uh, get into gaming. Um, yeah, I haven't been around much because uh, I've been taking a little break from the channel, but I'm going to try and make more videos more consistently and I uh, hope you enjoy the videos. And um, I hope you will stick with me and I hope to see you in the next one. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.